monster. Figured you would. I don't have any of that. I've got the boxes that you have with Russell I have I had a um, I had a CD that had like all I maybe had like twelve of their songs. I had a corporal boil. That's what I had. But let me ask you like a serious question though before we before we do this. Um Where's my shot Oh, will you handle my shot glass? Down there in the corner. Thank you. How many, um, how many of my cousin's volleyball pictures can I like before my family gets mad? About the, oh, we should. That'd be great. Hey, everybody, welcome to Grown Man like Record Night. Like a rockumentary. Oh, what, Lassen to come do it? This is. <laughs> we've got headroom. We've I got headroom. I, like to, I'm, I felt like I was going to exclaim tonight. So I have to do a lot of exclaiming to make, make up for this. We headroom. do need headroom. We, we've heard Harvey Weinstein might show up. It's just my penis. Just look at it. Just look at it. Scream into the end of it. <laughs> Come up to my penis and scream into the end of it. How would you scream into the do you I, step up to the mic? Hey. Do you want <laughs> step up to the mic? Do you want a bit part in Full House season eight? <laughs> then scream into the end of my penis. How do you think John Stamos that Um because he's a fine looking Greek gentleman is the answer to that, Jay. If you want to just start right now. We will are we gonna start? Let's you, start. Um uh, Welcome to Grown Man Record Night. We appreciate you spending your Friday night here with us uh, live on the internet where we uh, I haven't been here in a few weeks. Steve ain't been here for fucking so I'm ever. I'm glad to be here. Um, we ain't going to do a show next week. I'm going to be on call. One of those so tonight shows. we're going to rip it up. We're ripping it. It's uh, Tonight is a serious situation. Cubs moving on to the pennant. Did they win tonight? Fuck off, Jay. Oh, oh, that was all the national comments. That was a good game. Long. That was a good game. Um, I think I think our chief meteorologist was there. Hey, at the game. Hey. Uh. She was her her family was pulling for the net. And that's what happens. You know the world needs ditch diggers too, Dan. I heard I heard Clemson lost tonight. They had a Friday night game, Clemson versus Syracuse. And if you're telling me Syracuse beat Clemson, it's over. They also like knocked, yeah. knocked their quarterback out. He was, Is that hurt? He, they, really? they threw him to the ground and the, the kid just passed out. He was out. Oh, football. Yeah, yeah. So that's serious. That's serious. This message furnished by the National Football League. Heart, hearts and prayers. <laughs> hearts and prayers is all I can say. Hearts and, and I'm saying that George is looking really good right now. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about it. That'd be another thing. That's all I'm See, doing. I gotta explain. That's another one of those things you put on a shirt. That's all I'm gonna say about it. <laughs> I was in Chapel Hill today. B ball. You were in Chapel Hill. B ball football. Yep. Talking about sports. We all we're all over the sports. Did you guys sports. did you guys see sports? Did you take a knee? Did you take a knee? I did. Okay. Now, oh, I did actually take a knee because I had to get down to my laptop because <laughs> uh, I was editing on a street corner. Well, that you, uh, you really don't get that experience in creative services is editing literally on a street corner, putting your laptop up on the planner on the corner. Now we're usually taking the knee. We're usually like, oh, let's go fly, let's go fly the drone. I don't know. We'll get some we'll get some chocolates, and then we'll fly the drone. We'll see how it goes. I was literally doing that today though. Laptop up on the planner on the corner of Franklin and Columbia, in Chapel Hill. I took a knee. Um, on my laptop bag as I'm trying to like he took a knee at Franklin like, and Columbia it's like I, I went I went to school for this and I'm, <laughs> I'm literally kneeling down on a street corner to 
do my job. Does it feel funny? You went to NC State. Does it feel funny that you are taking a knee in, in, in I Chapel Hill? I grew up Hill? a Carolina fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, was. I did grow up a Carolina fan. Uh, but I can't stand that color. That, what? That corn, Some guy come up and said, flower blue. You know, you know how you know, you know how you know, know that uh, God's a Carolina fan? That sky, Carolina blue. Go blue. Go. <laughs> Go. You guys ever heard the accent where you're from? Did he have? Yeah, you're fucking lucky because it's awful. Did, did he have a down east kind of accent? Go. Like, like as you go into Baltimore, you get it really, really bad. You know, that weird kind of coastal thing? We had that. Um, originally, I think that's where that came from here. But growing up, we called that the Greensboro accent. Really? Me and cameraman did. Uh, because some of our teachers would say... You don't own your bones. Yeah, when you go home, we don't have any homework. Just make sure that you give your dog a bone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We don't have any homework. Give your dog a bone. Yeah. It's, it's awful. It's all just awful. Um, everything's terrible. That's the, that's the, uh, uh, yeah. That's the punchline of this story. Mm. When are the Foo Fighters coming? Jay, microphone, Jay. Get on the mic, Jay. You go to the mic, Foo Fighters? Jay. Get on the mic. Get on the mic, Jay. Yeah, Get on the mic. The Foo Fighters Sunday. Jay's going to see the Foo Fighters yeah. Sunday. It should be a good show. Maybe. I don't Tickets know available. Saying. Are they? From you. Oh, from me. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I got two for sale. We got two. Come, put your two uh, finger, you got to put your, two your, fingers your, up. Your lights was flickering. People want to come. Uh, color, the color um, black and white. Uh, oh. Send text 336-282-4744. You got to put right two now. in front of the camera. You can steal his identity right text now. Text him right now and uh, tell him you want tickets. In five minutes, you can steal Jay's identity. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really prepare a show, so I'm kind of just... I think here's the deal about the tickets to Foo Fighters. I'd love to go see them, but if I was going to buy tickets right now, I should buy tickets to the King Crimson show in mm. Durham. Because that's a show that I'm really sad that I'm not going to go see. I really don't pay money for music. Yeah, I know you don't. There's something about that I just can't... Ad- now, I'm lazy and I don't like to go to shows either. That's something to do with it. But there's certain parts of stuff like that that just really sticks in my crawl and I just can't I can't do it um yeah shows? no like bands that charge money like they should just not charge money over like you, and this, they should just eat rocks anything's like over punk rock prices and I, I know it's all Ticketmaster for the most part I'm not blaming the bands at all the Rolling Stones come around and they say hey we're the fucking Rolling Stones you want to come see us play Two hundred dollars, and I'm like, I hear you, buddy. Because he's like, I'd rather, I, not, I'd rather not do this, but if I want to do it, it's two hundred bucks. I agree with you, and it should be expensive to go see the Rolling Stones nowadays. Because yeah, you don't probably have a lot more chances. But the internal punk rock in me is like, yeah, that's cool, go do that, but I'm not gonna buy it. What about the Corky Thatcher band? What, where, the Corky Thatcher band. Did you guys know that Corky from uh, Life Goes On? Um, Corky Thatcher had the Down syndrome. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not his real name, right? No, I could, Chris. He's got a band? He had a band. His name's Chris something. Had a band and they played on this morning. Did he show. call it the Corky Thatcher band? No, I'll, I'm going to look it up and we're going to play it. Oh, Lord. Tell me a story, Steve. Where you been? What the hell you been doing? I don't have any stories to tell. Uh, or do I? No, where you been? Where have I last, been? Last, uh. Where were you? The last, uh, last time oh, we did the show. Well, last week, last weekend we some gigs. was a very busy weekend for me. Um, Saturday morning, I had to get up at 4.30 in the morning to go to Wilkesboro for the Brushy Mountain Apple Festival. Mm-hmm. Had to got to be in there by 7 to get your stuff set up. And, and luckily, I, I, could, I didn't have to work the whole day because it worked until 5. Yeah. I got out of there about 2 because um, I had a gig in King Saturday night, Leadneck, oh. and uh, that went really well the first set. I recorded it, but I haven't listened to it because I was so pissed. By the end of the night, I was tired. Sure. And first set, we killed it. We killed it. Second set, we did not kill it. In fact, there were people screwing up that I was like, I ought to be the one screwing up because I'm the one that needs some fucking rest. Yeah. You know? So I was kind of pissed by the end of the show. Um, 
to walk out on. And then Sunday morning, I had to get up at like nine to be at the fellowship by ten fifteen to rehearse for the service at eleven. And I played guitar on a, like a, a Mexican tune. Sweet. Cuando el pobre. I fell in love with a Mexican. I, well, I played. There was a drummer and a piano player playing along, so I, I decided I, I, picking it is a big waste of time because nobody can hear it. So, you know, I, I, didn't, I was so tired. I didn't want to haul my amp in. So, I got a nice the, the Acoustasonic, the Fender Acoustasonic Junior, mm. which is a nice amp, but it's heavy as crap. For I read the review. Amp. I read the review of the show. I heard it went kind of queso so. Queso so. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so I was just worn out. That was the one. I don't. Weekend before that, didn't you have to work? Uh, you, yeah, that may have been. It. You didn't do two weeks ago. No. You had to work that night. There was something that went on. Um, was that two weeks? I can't really remember. So. Jackson three. Celebrate, celebrate. Let's all come together and celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate, it's a celebration of love. Celebrate, celebrate, let's all come together and celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate, it's a celebration of love. Voices joined in harmony all around the world. The sound of joy and laughter. From every boy and girl In my dreams I see a world Of many colors bright Shining in the morning sky And lighting up the night And I say we celebrate, celebrate Let's all come together and celebrate Celebrate, celebrate It's a celebration of love Celebrate, celebrate <laughs> Jay poses the question where the world is where was the drummer at? I'll tell you right now. We we strive to be in that place all time sure. at all times. Who doesn't? That that's my goal in life is to be in yeah. that space. That was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> what was the drama? My goal, my goal, my goal in life is to get as many of them as I can before the cops show up. Oh, God. Um, we'll just take a shot. Hey, you know what? What? Put mic on. Yeah, so we're still good. It's so important for rock and roll. I will say, I don't think we've never done this. Uh, on Girl Man Record Night. And many mm -hmm. shots have we taken for people that have died. Never done what? Uh, Whose lines behind you? I'm gonna say... I can't tell you what assault is. Go somewhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> behind the laptop. <laughs> such a big part of rock and roll, to me, really, is gone. So for the second week in a row, what? I say we take a shot for Tom Petty. Tom Petty. Oh, I wasn't here for Tom Petty. Yeah. Did y'all play any Tom Petty? I'll we played Jay. One thing I didn't bring. I could have. I could have at least brought. And mine, I, I only well, have one. The only thing I have is a Travis Wilburn. Really? Yeah. Isn't that embar that's embarrassing? Yeah. And it's embarrassing for me because Jay's got yeah. uh, what was one we played last week? Damn that, the torpedoes. Oh, that's, a good, that's a good. one. And I've got um, the the 80s one, the red one. Wallflower. Mm, I got Wallflower. It's the early 80s, but. As much as I'm like, yeah, man, I'm a big Tom Petty fan. I don't have any of that. I really don't have CDs. You don't have TP? No. And I really don't have CDs and shit, so it's embarrassing for me. No, just... But you've got other places to, to put your ears. I mean, it, well, it's, and it's great music. And I don't see Tom Petty records. What, what I don't I, see Tom Petty What records. I really appreciated you? is his show on, on 
uh, Sirius XM, Barry Treasures. It was, it's great. He's great. He's great on the radio. You say it's Jim Petty. No, 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 no. it's Richard Petty. Tom Petty's Barry Treasures. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. So I will drink. Well, Tom Petty. The one thing I got, I got a hold back though is, is he was born in Gainesville, yeah. and he's a huge. He like worked. He worked at the stadium for like the Gators. And Get him Gators. I, I, I fucking hate that. But you know, here's to Tom Petty. Yeah, I didn't realize that mm, they, mm, that mm. they were all from there. I thought mm -hmm. maybe I thought maybe the band was from like the L.A. or something. Another yeah, game. Uh, one cool thing though, um, October twentieth this month at Blind Tiger, the Vagabond Saint Society is putting on a show. It's a Tom Petty show. And the cool thing about Vagabond Saints is it's it's these musicians, really good musicians, local. Oh yeah, yeah. And they do these thematic things, and they don't have a singer. They ask folks to come and sing songs. So on a, any given night when they did Tommy the Who, the Who's Tommy, mm -hmm. they had like 20 people come up and just sing different songs while they played. And it was really cool. I actually performed with them. The, uh, it was REM. It was REM. It was downtown uh, for Rock the Block or whatever it was. But they're doing a Tom Petty show October 20th. Um, I think I'm. Uh, Alan Mowey came to the show and he pitched to me an idea of, of uh, doing a show with Vagabond Saints. With it's all it's all grunge music and uh, basically all the bands we're covering is folks that lost somebody to heroin. I think it's like oh. a fundraiser. Maybe I'll do an opioid thing. <gasps> Save addiction. I may be doing the Soundgarden stuff. Hmm. So. Looking forward to that. Yeah, state of addiction. Let's I'll keep, get a, let's I'll keep get a, you. I'll keep you tuned. Let's get a brand it's not even on the schedule, but so this might be something in the work. Maybe I said too much. Because they're they're actually doing. Uh, get TV time. Before they do the opioid night, they're doing a um, Velvet Underground. Mm. That should be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Did I tell that story about I played the Velvet Underground song for a girl? So la last time. I haven't been here since your show. Or have I been here since your show? No. No. Because I took some really cool pictures. Oh, yeah. I want a good heart picture. You want a good heart picture? Let me send you a heart picture. Okay. So, say something. I briefed, I briefed people we about even, it last week. We haven't even gotten to what we played. Up to the back. No, no, no. Not at all. Hey, listen. I, so, I'm going to bust through some of this stuff. I, uh, Did I send you any of these? No. My mom wants to see them. Okay. You know, you excited for Stranger Things season two coming out? Yes, there's a new. The last trailer came out today. Yeah, I haven't <coughs> seen it yet. Season two soundtrack to be released on vinyl and cassette. And speaking of which, well, I have, I have the, ahead of the show's return. I have the soundtrack. Yeah, right. It's great. It's That's got a lot of great. Awesome. Up. Yeah, this guy's, uh, you know, like homage to like um, kind of Phantom Dream, kind of Vangelis. Vangel well, yeah. I mean, this is a, uh, the, the band is uh, Survive that did the theme, all caps, Survive. I'm going to send Season you. two, they've got some uh, other stuff coming in there that's, uh, that should be cool. So that's coming out. Uh, let's see, nearly 200,000 vinyl records from the Boston Public Library's Sound Archive are going online. Pretty cool. Uh, Nonprofit Digital Library Internet Archive is making um, the Boston Public Library's entire 200,000 song vinyl collection available. Uh, let's try to find out what the hell's on here. See if it's all, that's all it says. I was wondering if it was going to be like all classical or what. Uh, the blues icon Muddy Waters debut album is being reissued on uh, vinyl and mono. It should be some, some cool shit. Um, that's going to come out at a time that I'll find eventually. Yeah, uh, it's the best of Muddy Rodder. Being released this November by Universal Music. Originally released in '58, the best of Muddy Waters is a 12-track collection of the musicians' most popular singles from '48. Damn, is that old? I guess so. Uh, I guess Crossroads is that old. '48 to '54, including Rolling Stone, Hoochie Coochie, and I just want to make love to you. Woo! Uh, good stuff. Um, and speaking of cassette, you know, we talked about the. Um, uh, the Stranger Things thing, they're going to yeah. release it on cassette tomorrow, the 15th, I guess it is. 14th. 14th, is officially 
cassette store day. Is it really? Yeah, it really is. Oh, man. Um, I should have brought some cassettes. You yeah. You should have told me. And so uh, they've officially, here's the, the list. Of, I, I guarantee you I don't know any of these. I'm people. sending these, these to Machete Miller. Okay. I'm Fear gonna of Tigers. I'm going to send these a little smaller. Nope. I want Because I'm sending size. a bunch of them. I want all of them. Full size. There's a bunch of bands that I don't really know at all. I'm sure they're indie rock bands. I shit. Look at this list. You yeah. just tell me. Hey, there's a music festival tomorrow yep. in, at Sika. Breeze through this. Tell me if you recognize a band. Um, no. I'm, I'm out of tune with shit, though. But this, the, I mean, dude, these are very indie bands, but there is a cassette store day. I don't know them. I'm not going to promote a bunch of bands that I don't know who the fuck they are. But still, if you're into cassettes... So I sent you some pictures. Okay. From your sh your show. From my show. I, I will say it was a great show. You know Grady... Um, oh, yeah. It was fun. Uh, good time. Great crowd. Yeah. You know, you guys get a, a good pull. And uh, here you made some good change that night. Yeah, we made we made moves. Power moves to shower moves, as the boss man would say. I was envious of... I, I wish I could play for a crowd like that just once. It'd be nice. Just once. <laughs> I mean, we played that when I play a show once every three years. That's what happens. <laughs> I'd rather play for a crowd than money. To be honest with you. Oh yeah, me too. When I never, because um, I'm going to piss the money away anyway. I ended up but, spending but the on crowd, my but the, what you get from that crowd is is non-negotiable. Totally. The whole time I played in front of some huge crowds, but I never got any money. It's only since we've done these like, oh, we're only playing this one show yeah. that we get money at all. Right. Never even thought about it because it took that money to put gas in the van that pulled the trailer. Sure. And to get the hotels sometimes. And sometimes it's like, oh, fuck you. It's on you to get the hotels and all yep. that stuff. So it was very rare. That never did I get a piece of money until we started piece doing of money. money. Reunion yeah. show. Never did I get a piece of money. No. Check it. Check your Gmail. Okay. Did you know Grady Tate died? I did not know that. Uh, huge jazz drummer, noted vocalist, dies at 85. Grady Tate, man. Oh, I thought that we were talking about the guy from um, San Francisco. San Fran that's Grady. what Jay said. Grady. Well, there's, well, there's that's some Tate that's and Grady. There was that, like that's Whitman Mayo. Okay. Miracle Whip. Whitman. Oh, that's gonna be my profile picture right there. Mayo. Which one do you um, like? I like the I like the one. I could enhance some of. The, I, I could actually go into Snapseed and fucking fix some of these. Sorry, that's good. Now, except do look at Tebow. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I'll just do like, this one. He's like quick texting one. his son. Hey, I'll be home in a little while. Huh? <laughs> um, let's see a heart picture. You guys want to see a heart picture? Barf. I'm barfing. I, I love the heart though. It was great. Man, that was the, some of the. That's probably the most fun I've ever had on stage. It sounded like, good. It sounded good. I told Jay last week. I was like, "That's the first time I played harp on stage," and I was like, "Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's like." I it's, felt like it's I like, was, it's like when Chris plays the theremin. It's like that thing. It's like, oh fuck, there's a harp. You know, there's a harmonica. It's like that sound. That's pretty cool. I felt like I was going, "Look at my dick! Everybody, come up here and look at my dick!" Yeah. When I was doing that, it was the greatest. That's that's um, what it's, that's what it's like being a singer, by the way. Yeah, oh sure, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know that's why. Exactly what it's the like. JPEG to the desktop. I'm trying to bring it in. You talk about it. You need to show it. I'm trying to do it. Life. Pull a Weinstein and show it. Life's um, life's throwing me some challenges here recently. Um, Goldberg, Iceberg, it's all the same. Is it Weinstein or Weinstein? Jay seems to think. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. I think it's Stein because it's EI. It's, that's the German derivative. Harpo. Steen would be IE. It would be what? Steen would be IE, Stein would be EI. And the great thing about foreign languages is most of them don't change like, I'm, like English. English has so many weird de derivatives of language that none of it really has great rules. So. Let me show you something about great rules. 
That's the great rule of blowing smoke. There you go. Blowing smoke. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll end up making that a profile picture of some sort. There you go. Yeah. I'm you actually... Know, can I tell I you a secret? That. I'm in the wrong... It's the wrong so hands. So, I play harp on a two or three songs. It's the wrong hands. I've got it backwards. What? But I didn't want to change it for the show. What's backwards? Yeah, the harp should be in this hand. It should be in the left. That's where you had it, man. Yeah. I was I was on the left side of stage. Yeah. Okay. I was, you were, I was stage right of you. Why does it matter what? Yeah. Long story. It don't, anyway, it don't, fu it don't fucking matter. Do with, it's got to do with the cup. Anyway, you've been reading heart books, haven't you? I've been reading heart books. So you're not holding it right. So what you tell me? That's what I'm not holding. But what was I telling you? I, oh, when I when I first started playing harp, I couldn't play harp. So we didn't do as many songs. We did uh, "Bring It On Home" was the first one yeah. we did. So I would just cut my hands like I was holding a harp and play, make noise. I was really good at making noise that sounded like a harp. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it, with a little bit of reverb, it, re it really sounded right, you know. Like, like Michael Winslow. Yeah, like a Michael Winslow thing. But uh, So I just kind of covered it like I, like I knew what I was doing, but I was just making the shit up with my mouth. <laughs> so that's my, that's, all, that's my story. I'm sticking with it. Sticking with it. Hang on. I wanted to play. Corky Thatcher? No, I did Corky Thatcher already. Just one guitar. I mean, that's what I'm. That's my deal. Okay. I brought one guitar pick in. I mean, that's my deal. But just, I just one guitar. But that's I really nice. Look at the lighting. Yeah, Look, that's yeah. nice. That's a good picture. You know that? That's took that picture has good composition. There was a good uh, <laughs> guy got up on stage that was taking pictures of us. You see that mm -hmm, guy? Mm -hmm. He's, he was a he just retired. He's a photog for Tom Warner, and he was with Channel Two for like ever. I bet he didn't do anything like that. He came up and he was like doing this, and I was like, "Hey, Bill." You're not on camera right now. Right? So. I was like, "Hey, Bill." Bill and he looked up at me. He was like, "Hey," and I was like, "What's going on?" He was like, "I'm trying to get some light on your face," and I'm like, "I'm playing a rock and roll show." And he was like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> it was so funny. This old guy, he's like 70 years old. Is this somebody you see on stories? And stuff? All the time. Oh. A friend of mine. O'Neill calls him the can uh, candy man. You see a hot chick, be like, "Hey, how you doing? No piece of candy." And they'd be like, and they, always, they would always be really? like, yeah, sure. And then he was like, I don't know, where'd you go to college? <laughs> I mean, but it starts with, you want a piece of candy? He's a candy man. The candy man. Candy man? Uh, you know, name them seven, boom. Six, five, seventy. Candy Hell man. Hell of a song. Hey, you know, look, why don't we start he's with, a why don't we start with what we played today? Yeah, he's, he's a, a gator. He's a gator. God, he is a gator. Fuck. All right, whatever. Uh, friends of uh, James and Trish, actually. I guess some people got to do that. Yeah. All right, here's some stuff what we played. I'm a, let's, let's rifle through this. We're right. going to rifle? We're rifling. We ain't rifling. For part of this it. Gonna, right. This is our three-hour show. A three-hour three show. show. A, a three-hour three show. show. <laughs> I came in real late because I was uh, out of town doing a story today. And when I came back, I was like, I got to put on a record so I can take a shit. Uh, huh while the show started and I was like um, I don't know this is I put this on and then as I was hitting the play button and walking away uh, like, oh fuck that's an that's an EP how much of a shit am I talking about here then I realized I was like oh I just had a little bit of a something for lunch so it's probably not going to be like oh I did the grande meal at Taco Bell and I'm going to uh, do a triple flusher that's going to reach all the way up like a brown iceberg back up into my butthole and I'm going to be embarrassed about it. No, it's going to be like a smaller <laughs> deal. Uh, so this EP from Boards of Canada, the Trans Canada Highway, was perfect. And I played side two, which included the Skyliner under the Coke sign and the Dave Van Cowboy uh, remix by Odd Nostrum. Um, it's funny you start with that because normally shows end with Boards of Canada. It's true. I, mean, I do not, that sometimes. Not all the time. Not I do that sometimes. But they're great to... Sometimes it's to take my head out of where it's at and put it into a place that it needs to be. That'll do it. That'll do it. That does it. Uh, sometimes I do some like heavy music right off the bat. Sometimes I'll do funk music right off the bat or like slow jazz. 
to take my da, 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 da. hey is your laptop charging you got a battery da, 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 da. Attitude, I'm gonna, adjustment. Gonna, attitude adjustment it, it's, it's all of the everything that comes together to making the show on top of whatever the bullshit of the day is uh, to try to take that and smack it into your face and be like yo chill the fuck out for a minute you guys seen the uh, Jaco Pistorius uh, documentary on I Netflix? haven't seen it is it good? Watched it two days ago. It is tremendous. I highly recommend it. That's why I played Weather Report. What's it called? Heavy Weather. It's just called Jocko. Jocko. Um, because this is definitely one of the ones. This guy's weird. What's that guy's name? Oh, that's... Um, He's a weird guy. Him and Jocko kind of butted heads. Zoe Newell? He kind of ran Weather Report. Um, so anyway... Uh, so I decided to play with this. Is, this is just a killer record. Jocko is just an amazingly weird, tragic figure. I mean, uh, I don't really know how else to put it. Amazingly tragic. Um, anyhow, that kind of ran out um, right as I was finishing the shit, and I really came over and it was like going, ha chunk, hey chunk, hey chunk. Hey, Chunk, and I blindly yacha, stabbed into the stack over here. Picked out one of my favorite Hendrix, like, weirdo, posthumous, uh, compilation-y things. Weird things you've never seen before that have songs you've never heard before. 16 Greatest Tits. This has some just bonkers, weird stuff. The stuff on this side starts out incredibly bluesy. There's some harp in there. I mean, really, it, it actually is. You wouldn't call it a bootleg then. I mean, there's only, really, it there really, only three or four official it, releases, it really and the rest is a kind of fall under. I would say, whether they're licensed I mean, via the estate or not, still a bootleg because the original artist in question. I think Hendrix might be the one that's like more than any other that shows up in that kind of realm of like. That's the first person I can think of. Is like, dude died. Let's exploit the fucking shit out of him. To me. I don't even think... They didn't do that with Morrison. Was that before Morrison? No. Around the same time. Re relatively speaking, right? Yeah, but they didn't... They, I mean, the door, the door still existed. Though, so. They didn't do that. I mean, and even Janice, they didn't do that. Who else around there? I don't know. It, nothing really jumps in my brain, but Hendrix, they're just like, oh, I've got some stuff on a tape recorder. Let's make a million dollars. Right. Um, it's interesting how that worked out. I don't know how that, what allowed that specifically to happen. But some of that stuff, to be fair, I like because I can only hear Purple Haze and Foxy Lady so many times on classic radio, uh, classic rock radio, before I'm just like, okay, cool. These are great songs, but Jesus Christ, I don't want to hear those songs. Um, these weirdo shits that are recorded on these weird, They're great. They're great. There was some stuff on here that was real windy, real, oh, uh, okay. But a good half of that side was banging. The other half was like, oh, it's like he's taking a smoke break and playing while he's talking. So he's jamming, but he's not jamming, you know what I mean? So I wanted to kind of tune the tempo down a little bit. I want a little Bill Evans trio since we met. This is some... Incredible stuff. 76 fantasy records. Uh, love Bill, Bill Ovens. Um, and uh, this was, uh, you know, it was up there what tempo-wise. What did I see him recently? I think it was the, In My Dreams. Ed McKay and it's cheap. Mm. Yeah, you can, get some Bill, you can get some Bill Ovens stuff. It, some of it is very slow. It's piano jazz. But I think he treats a piano very well. Okay. And it's definitely worth uh, checking out. <clears throat> I'm sure he has some that are just snoozers all the way through, but he has some that are very important as well. Uh, Friday the 13th. Ooh. So we didn't get too crazy into like play. We've done the whole thing where we play Friday the 13th records and all that jazz. But game, game footage. Game footage. I do have to pull up the uh, Sean uh, 0612 oh, Friday yeah. the 13th graphic, of course. But uh, pulled out a little something, a little, uh, no, a little, uh, little Black Sabbath. Master. 
of reality. I had to play Black Sabbath on Friday the 13th. And actually, uh, all day long, um, I told the reporter I was with, I'm like, it's Friday the 13th, we're probably going to listen to Black Sabbath all day long. That's what hey, we did. What about uh, Zach Wilde coming to town? Zach Wilde recently. did come to town. Was that last week? Was this mm. week? This week. A couple days ago. It's, it was called Zach Sabbath. Yeah. So he's playing like Sabbath tunes, I, I have to assume. Yeah, all Sabbath. Good band, though. Yeah. Great band. And he got up and uh, just showed his ass, like guitar-wise. Showed his ass. Got up on the bar. Okay. And just... Harmonics. <laughs> went, went bonkers. Very people, Zach Wild. People were like, "Whoa!" Does he have a, a, a Zach Wild pedal? Probably. You know the Zach Wild pedal? I've I, got it. I I've bought got one for my son. Oh, the, the, the wah pedal. The circles on it, you know. Or was it overdrive? No, it's just a just overdrive pedal. Oh, yeah. It's got the stupid Zach Wild like black and white circles. I on remember it. back in the day when I we was wondering if he had one. When we were um, <laughs> playing shows religiously, we'd play the place locally. Zach Wild and the no uh, Black Label Society was there the night before, and I found this big stack of Zach Wild Black Label Society picks, and I've got some mm. still somewhere. They had his little like signature and okay. stuff. I was like, these are the official like real picks. I was like, that's oh, cool. That's, yeah, that's real cool. At the time, I was like, oh, it's dude, Zach Wild. Should have peed on him. Yeah, just a little bit of dribble. Uh, but you know, they're good. I like it now. I and like then, that and stuff. And then now. played with that pick. Don't wash it off. What about a uh, little Pink Floyd relics? Dude. Played side one. I'm jealous. Uh, Arnold Wayne, Interstellar Overdrive, I see him when we play. I don't have that out. Remember a day, paint box. <laughs> Killer. Got that from Pat. Arnold Lane had a strange oh, hobby. Collecting clothes. Yeah. Killer stuff, man. Uh, and I mean, I can't Don't you think it looks like, um, is it supposed to look like the guy from Mad Magazine? Or That's that what I think. It's supposed to look like, or Alfred is E. Newman. I don't know. Or is that just a coincidence? Is that before Alfred E. Newman? No. No, no. no. About the same time it was m most popular. What about Reginald Denny? What about Reginald R.D.? Um, should have been bobbing and weaving. Uh, I kind of randomly stabbed into the country stack, and I pulled this out. And I was like, "Oh shit!" Country stack. I've got some Charlie Daniels that is that are more funk records than anything else. I brought I, what I consider southern rock. I was going to play it when I saw you play that. I was like, "Well, I'm going to wait." Charlie Daniels band Full Moon. I'm going to wait. This was uh, 1980 on CBS. Yeah, this came out. This came. This was the one that came out after. Um, what was it called? Million Mile, whatever. Reflection. Million Man March. Million Mile Reflections is the, the big album that had Devil Went Down to Georgia is the yeah. one right before this. I don't know why I played that. I just really, I just kind of stabbed I like it. Old Charlie's from uh, Down East in Wilmington. He was born in Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, that's right. Where lo Long Borders live. Yeah, that's that's where old uh, Carl the Envelope, envelope might be uh, yeah. stepping on some ground that Charlie Daniels once did. <laughs> uh, Metal Theologian says he wants to fight the chode with the dreads. I think he's, he's talking that's about Chibo. Chibo, man. That's Chibo. That's Chibo. Chibo kept saying, the funny thing is he'd be like, man, I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> the Riggs rule. The, I call that the Riggs rule. Uh, I like can... Uh, oh, I'm getting too old for this. Yeah, in uh, Lethal Weapon. I'm getting too old for this shit. Takes a lot. It takes a lot of energy to put on a show like that. My hat goes off to those guys. I, I, it, for me, I got a real kick out of watching dual lead singers because I don't. I don't know that that yeah. that world. No. It, it was really nice. It was. It was really nice to because I can't watch a show and just watch a show. I have to analyze it in certain fucking ways that makes me probably not enjoy it as much as I could. Well, that's how I do films. Are you? Yeah. Once I went to film school, straight, I was like, and I can never enjoy a music, uh, I mean, a, a film the way that I used to. Like the first time, when me and Jay saw Pulp Fiction in the studio, I mean, in the uh, theater, that can that changed my entire... I bet. ...movie life. I anyway. Was, yeah. Then you came over, Steve, and brought some record albums. Yeah, I had to play something really big. Um... 
course, you know what this is. It's King Crimson's In the Court of the Crimson King, their debut album. And I played it because, like, Tuesday, October 10th, was the 48th anniversary of the release of this album. Oh, wow. And this album did a lot to define kind of prog, I think. I mean, look at that cover. That cover is amazing. Yeah. It was actually done... Um, I found a really cool article on DGM Live's website, which is the digital global mobile live website for King Crimson, basically, and, hmm. and a lot of the other artists that, that practice on that label. But um, a lot of cool, you can keep up with King Crimson through that. And this guy wrote an article about this album release, and it was really cool, some of the stuff he mentioned. This cover was done by a guy named Barry Godber, he was actually not an, an artist per se. He was an artist, but he was a computer programmer. This is the only cover he ever did. It's the only, it's the only cover painting he ever did. He died shortly after the release of this album in 1970 of a heart attack. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, you don't see any, there's no words on it whatsoever. It's just his face and then his ear and his ear, 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 and his ear, ear, whatever. I don't know what that is, okay. but um, it's, it's an amazing cover. And the the record, Island Records was really worried about the release. They're like, well, it, it needs to have some words on it because record store owners are getting really worried that you don't explain it. And Robert Fripp's answer was, well, when you look on the spine or you look on the album, it's the album that doesn't have anything on it, and that's how you know it's that's the album. Yeah. And it, it kind of was really cool the way he explained it. It's like, well, this is how we're releasing it. So, huh. but. Um, the artist was actually a really good friend of Peter Sinfield, who was the guy who wrote all the words for the early, the two, first two albums at least. He was a, also good friends with Greg Lake and kind of went with Greg Lake to Emerson Lake and Palmer huh. and wrote Lucky Man and some of the other songs that were... As a songwriter, not like a... He's, he was known as a songwriter, but he also did like the light show for King Crimson when, when they wow. used to drop, you know the um, stuff in the water and or the oil and yep. make the crazy light show stuff that was his job with the band but he was really the songwriter um of, of the early of the the early stuff that's more like grandeur prog you know knights and armor and not that it's knights and armor and shit but i get a feeling i get a feeling about that kind of shit when i hear yeah early king crimson oh yeah i do too that, that yeah um, after that, that, so I wanted to play some, they're kind of one-offs because there were some things, I got here late, um, so when I got here I wanted to play some stuff and I didn't have time to play like sides, cross down, cross so I, down I, track, I made it a one-off yeah. set, which was kind of cool, a little mini one-off set, um, I also played, I love this fucking with John man. Carpenter, dude, and the reason I played that is he's got a new album coming out. Uh, on the next week, I think. Let's see, when is this coming out? Uh, can't tell you. But it's, it's the new album, com this is uh, his Lost Themes album, which is not stuff from films, but it, you, you could think it might Open be. Up, Jay. So his new album is revisiting his classic <laughs> scores, but they've re-recorded with his son and his um, yep. godson. Dude. And, his godson is actually um, a guy named Daniel Davies. He's the son of Dave Davies. Really? From the Kinks. Yeah. Um, in fact, so it turns out that John Carpenter and Dave Davies are really good friends. So he, he's a, he's a god. That's his. He's the godfather of Dave Davies' son, and he Uncle plays Rick guitar Davies. just like his dad. Yeah. And he he's playing the guitar solos that his dad like his dad played on uh, one of the film scores. Uh, what the hell was for it? Carpenter? For John Carpenter, yeah, 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 wow. yeah, 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 yeah. That shit is so bonkers good. If you don't love these Carpenters, also I shit, will say this. Oh also, God. John Carpenter's kicking off a tour. It starts on a couple days before Halloween on October 29th. Oh, if anybody okay. kicks off a tour on Halloween, it'd be yeah. great for John Carpenter to do so. But he's, he's ma ma mainly in the West. Coast area, but he's also going to play New York. I got some good Halloweeny uh, VHS tapes I want to play, but I got Uncle Buck stuck in my player. I also picked up Magnum Force this week. Saw Thirteen re-recorded versions of past works uh, from movies like Dark Star, Vampires, Halloween, They Live, The Fog, um, 
the thing and yeah it's it's pretty cool yeah so i look forward to maybe I'm, when I is might, that i might buy that because i've got lost themes one and two mm. next we played uh lennon claypool or the Claypool Lennon Delirium, yeah. Monolithophobos. That's good all the way through. One of the, it's good all the way through. It's space rock. It was their intention when they got together to do that. And I played this because I think it was October 9th, which is Monday, is Sean Lennon's birthday. Wow. And it also happened to be his dad's birthday. So I had to play wow. a little, a little the piece. The same day. The same damn day, John Lennon. This is... Uh, I think we played Everybody's Got Something to Hide Set Me and My Monkey off the White Album. Do we address uh, that, the, the sheer warpness? No, no we didn't show it, but this album yeah. is, that, that album for me is probably the most warped album I have, but it actually plays pretty damn well to be so damn warped. It's the Beatles that I'm still looking for also. So I well, ain't talking too much shit because I don't have it at all. I don't even have a shitty copy. So today's october actually 14th now and it's justin hayward's birthday so i wanted to play some moody blues and this is i'll tell you it, it's it's uh this is a great compilation this is probably to me the best engineered produced compilation i've ever heard it, it it's so amazingly well constructed and the cool thing about moody blues it's like they have those little spoken word sound files they can use to like link songs together and, yeah. and they do that in this this album and it it makes it seamless and and beautiful and and wonderful so i wanted to play a justin hayward uh october 13th friday um, heroes album came out oh really on that date october 13th i think it was what year shit i don't know 75 maybe 77, 77 on here but this might be a 77 wow. i believe you of course we heard the title track that's when i was born did that has uh robert fripp playing some pretty cool stuff like yeah and he knows on there doing three, some shit brian eno produced and plays his keyboard and does his tape loops and all kinds of cool shit on this album yeah love this record yeah another birthday we celebrated and this was the weirdest one to mix into all of them but it was paul simon which I love, and I've got a lot of Simon. I've got most of the Simon Garfunkel albums, but I, I wanted to play just Paul, and he, there's a really cool guitar, acoustic guitar song called Armistice Day on this uh, solo album. This is the album that's got me and Julio. I was going to play me yeah. and Julio down by the schoolyard, that's but great Armistice album. Day is really cool, and it kind of, if you haven't heard it before, I wanted to play it. So That whole shit's great. And then you guys mentioned to me... Jay was talking about Jay. And I didn't have it. any Van Hagar... So I was really Sammy Hagar's birthday. It Today is six, well, yesterday the thirteenth. Jay's Friday. Hey, you got any uh, Van Hagar? And I was like, I ain't got and no you Van. Do have? Van. I don't think I have Van you Hagar. Got and, I was like, and you didn't have no Van Hagar when you came in. But I was like, I got some Montrose. Even better than Van Hagar. Now, grown man record night legend type material. Legend. The first time Little Bananas ever heard a rock and roll. Record. I think of your dad when I hear Montrose. Yeah. My dad had a Montrose tape, and it was a black tape. So it immediately drew my attention when I was flipping through all my dad's tapes. All these white tapes had a couple cool clear tapes. Ooh. I mean, he was cool. He, he was some cool. modern-day clear tapes? He had some clear tapes, and then there's a black tape. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Hold the phone. Who's this black tape? Hold the phone. And it said Montrose, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like three, four years old put this Montrose tape in. I got the fires on the front end of this. And uh, it just, <laughs> just right off of the bat. And I was like, Ugh. just, and it just, oh, what? No, it's not the air conditioner. And then, and then, and I've, I've told that part on the show before. Yeah, but, but, but you tell it so mid, well, you might as well tell it again. The middle to the end of the, of the song, Dude comes in with the uh, guitar solo, and, and I remember it. I'd heard it before, so it wasn't the first time I heard it or nothing. But a year or two later, I'm four years old, and the guitar solo comes in, and I'd probably seen on TV like, oh, guitar player goes all you know crazy on stage. Or I remember like this, and just like 
taking an entire table out when the solo comes on. Yeah, and just raking it over and, and doing like the air guitar. My mom's like, what are you doing? And I'm like... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you can only imagine what it would be like uh, to do that in slow motion, like where you're oh clearing the table. To me, there's no better definition of what rock and roll is than Montrose. And probably nobody else would ever understand that in the history of the world, but oh my God. And I'm just like, rock and roll. I will flip this table the fuck over. And I dare somebody, come do something about it. Come get in my way and feel what rock and roll really feels like when it's turned sideways and shoved right up your ass. <laughs> we'll be right back. I'm sorry, we don't have any commercials. Right? We played one more album before yeah. the, the show. And I, I've been meaning to bring this, I keep forgetting. Man. Because I know it's a, it's kind of fits in with the Grown Man Record Night. Oh, this yeah. is the Desert Sessions Volume 1 and 2. We played Volume 2. I couldn't remember which one had weird shit on it. So I think the first one I no, know the, for a the fact. No, the one I played had some weird shit on it. Yeah. <laughs> the very first one I know for a fact. The, the entire recording claim, session is mushrooms. They were on mushrooms. Yeah, so like, yeah. they've yeah. said it. Uh, side 2 had some great jams on it. I forget it's about that. It's kind of a cool white vinyl with some kind of weird red splats in it. But Bootleg as hell. Bootleg as hell, but, but here it is. It's the only way I, I wish hair. I, f I got this in Atlanta at a kind Not of a, a bad bootleg at high all. price place, but you know y where do you find stuff like this? I, I mean, I didn't play. I played, paid in the twenties for it, but he had them all, mm. and I picked one, and I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh, I, I get these in all the time. I n I've never seen them since. Yeah, I should have went ahead and bought them all because I kind of wish I had them all now. Yeah, probably so. What? In Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta, Roswell." All right, let's get into it's a dig of the week. It's a hoity toity record store in Roswell. Here, take that so I don't mess it up. Thank you. You can't have it. Um, so that's what we played. Good night. Oh, right. we're doing more show? Yeah, it's, it's going to be like four or five hours long. That's good. Yeah, check it out. A couple things I picked up uh, for Dig of the Week. Um, the last couple weeks that I've not shown here on the pro. You know, I got that big haul from my mom from the library. Yeah, the library. So I did like the cream of the crop stuff for that one week. And then uh, last week I did some just a random stack which had like a lot of the Wings records I didn't have in it. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm going to give that stack a break. There's still probably at least 10 records uh, left in that stack. Back off of that because I picked up some good stuff in some thrift stores in the last couple weeks, like uh, a night on the town with Buck Owens and his Buckaroos. And if you don't like Buck Owens, I don't really don't want to talk to you. I ain't got no business with you. Pretty early for Buck Owens and his Buckaroos. Be careful, Jay. That that falls all apart. If you don't like Buck Owens, fuck you. Damn right. I Buck mean, Owens is awesome. It's awesome. That, that Beggar's that's, Field. That's California. That's California music, country. As it as it gets. Something uh, I didn't realize that I needed to have. Did you Did you know that Herbie Mann did a reggae record? I did not. Look at that. What year, Jay, did, what year was that? Jay has it. What Herbie year? Mann reggae. And uh, Herbie Mann is a, just. this is 74, way earlier than I thought this was going to be. 74 in Atlantic, um, Herbie Mann reggae. Tons of Herbie Mann records and tons of Herbie Mann records talked about here on this program. And it's one of those people that I tell you that you'll run into Herbie Mann records for a dollar oh. all day long. And if you don't buy them to where you're satisfied, you're an idiot. Because whether you're sampling for beats and samples and da da da. It says Mick Taylor guitar. Mick, Mick Taylor? Taylor? Mick Taylor. From the Stones. Rolling Stones. It's got to be. But really? Do not hate. Do not sleep on my man. My man. All Herbie, right. my man. I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Do it. And do a record that I got because it really is appropriate. Oh. I got a Herbie Man record. Did you really? I did. One I've never seen before. I've never seen that it's one either. It's from 1969. I think Herbie was was into the, was into some LSD. This is a a great like kind of out there record for Herbie Man. Yeah. It's called Stone Flute. Wow. It's on Embry. It's his first record on I think his label. It's called Embryo Records. Check this. Show this weird. Wow. Um, that, that was Mick, um, Mick, Taylor. Jay, that is, Mick Taylor. Jay said that is a Mick Taylor from the Stones. 
Wow. A totally atypical Herbie Man recording, but one which rewards repeated listening, according to All Music. Wow. This is really cool. You know, but Jay, back to your point, I wonder if that's after the, uh, you know, the Stones went down to Jamaica and got all inspired and recorded. You remember that? that yeah, was like a big they deal. ended up leaving Jamaica and coming to Muscle Shoals. To yeah, that's it right. All so I wonder if that... was a fucked up recording. Well. After that, that Mick Taylor... He was all into the island reggae, reggae shit, red like reggae, it. and was on that fucking what, Herbie Man record. 74. 74. Like that would four. be it. That's that would it. be it. Because it was like sticky fingers. And oh, that's what happened. He played on four Herbie Man records. Hey. We're having big talk I'm, right now. Hey. He played on tubular bells, too. I'm Jesus Christ. He played on tubular Somebody come bells? get some of it. I thought it was all um, Mike Oldfield. My reporter for the day mentioned tubular bells today. She said her tub her bell tubulars were bells. It was a gentleman. Oh, his bells were tubular. Uh, I was like, you know what? I'm probably going to play that tonight. It's Friday the Thirteenth. But you didn't. I haven't. I haven't so far. You know, speaking of that, check this out. This is something. It's very weird. Here on the program several weeks ago, it was something I talked about. Maybe in Dig of the Week. Maybe I didn't. And I was like, it was this weird, crazy sound effect record, and I didn't buy it, and I totally should have. Um, and I went back this next time, it's 49 cents, and I have no business buying sound effect records, but I did. Because you know why? Because fuck your uncle, that's why. Um, this is called Stereo Sound Spectacular. Look at this, Steve. Look at this, the front artwork, mm, first of all. That's cool as shit. And so the tracks on the back are Jet Engines and Test Cell... Sonic Boom, uh, you've got a harbor scene, speed boats. That's side A. You go over to side B. Now, here's some of the things you hear on side B. Okay. Pigeons in Hayloft. Okay. Oh, is this a sound effect? Horses, comma, horses. I don't care for that. <laughs> Jungle scene, and number six, hogs slaughtered. Number seven, what, wait a Hog minute. Hogs slaughtered? Wait a minute. Number six. Uh, hogs slaughtered. That's like. Babbling brook, frogs, livestock, day crickets, children playing. Ooh, children playing. We should. This yeah. is what I need to play over that, that other one I'm going to show you. That's what I'm saying. Minute. And look at that. It's in the original shrink. Magic Mechanical Orchestra. That's a but record. Look at that front artwork, though. It's so good. Oh, that's awesome. Did you show that? that up, Did you yeah. show that? And I talk, it's so funny because I talked about it a few weeks ago, and I was just like, oh, I don't have room. For, i, I got to start questioning room, and like, I don't have shelf space for all these records that are like, oh, that's a funny cover. But then I was like, oh, it's got this track called Hog Slaughtered, and I thought about it for da 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 Weeks later, I go back, and it's still there, and it's 49 cents, keep in mind. And I'm like, Dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? Where is your digger spirit? Get your 49 or 51 cent after tax dick out of your pocket and buy this record for Christ's sake, you, you idiot frame. motherfucker. You That's like really good shape. Yeah, it's, it's right. Cool yeah. yeah. I also found this, that same spot. Probably my third copy and best looking copy of this record. If you guys oh, don't have yeah. this. I've got it. Hang on, Ramsey, the Ramsey Lewis. I think video. I got a couple of copies. Original shrink. Let me tell you, look at this. Mine doesn't look that good. I will probably, out of all the ones I have, I'll probably keep this one. Woo. Cadet. On oh, Cadet. It's got Hang on Sloopy on it, which is like a big deal. Hang your Sloopy. Big doll. It's uh, kind of like a big deal and whatnot. Yeah, do some, Steve. Okay. Because all the ones I so, got left come from a place. I went to um, uh, the used bookstore that has records. Yeah. And I'll tell you, they stepped up their damn game. Really? Yeah, even the Winston. I, recently, I thought they were taken from the Winston store and put in the Greensboro store. So Winston was like, crap. But they have actually stepped it up. But and, crap. Um, they're pretty honest. They'll be like, you know, they'll put like a price. Like some of their prices are a little higher on stuff that they think are worth more. But they'll put like a pretty cheap price on things that say scratched or whatever. And I and I I listen to it and it's like, it's not it's not that bad. Yeah. You know. So 
Um, this is a compilation from a company called Crystal Corporation. I don't know what year it came out, but I got it because I just love compilations that have kind of some cool stuff that I can play on a, on a, on a night like this, really. Yeah. Um, Tommy James and Shondells. Oh. Uh, 1910 Fruit Gum Company, Ohio yep. Express. Uh, Big Brother and the Holding Company, the Amboy Dukes with Journey to the Center of the Mind, Turtles, Strawberry Alarm Clock, The Who, Sand Pebbles, The Lemon Pipers, Delphonics. So it's pretty cool. And Sonny and Cher. It's pretty psychedelic y pop. It's a nice it's uh, bubblegum psychedelic. Nice bubblegum psychedelic album. Yeah. Uh, it's not all psychedelic. The next one I th thought I had, I wasn't sure I had, but. It didn't matter that I had because I wasn't going to let it go for a buck forty-five, mm. and it is in great shape. And it's the George Benson cookbook. And oh, Jay, if you don't, do you have this? It's for you. I bought it for you. I've never seen that cover. Enjoy the shit out of it. I have the same. I have the same version. You of know it. what mine is? Mine's black. Yeah, I, you have probably the original. This is like wow. a, a reissue. Okay. Not, Dude, I have the same. I have the that, same version. That's that is a, a great, great record. Night. That is a great George Benson album. Probably is one of his the, best. I would say the best for me. Early. Yeah, it's early. Yeah. Um, the next one is a CTI. It's Milt Jackson. Milt Jackson. Milt Jackson. Uh, Sunflower. It also has Herbie Hancock, Freddie Hubbard, Ron Carter, and Billy Cobham on yep. it. Got that one. That was also, uh, it's a great record. It's also one of Bossman's favorite records. Really? Yep. He loves that I record. I didn't know that. He really loves that record. He used to study to it, I believe. I'm going to do one more. Yeah. That's just, don't worry about it. Receipt just fell out. And uh, this other one I got the same day. I got like at least four at the same time. This is, uh, I need to do some research on this. It's some kind of um, South American kind of jazz group, but more like, I don't know, like kind of like Chase maybe? Okay. Um, where where did you find that? Barabbas. It's a thrift store called thing? Called Power. It's, this is sealed. Really? Yeah. Goodwill? No, 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 Ed McKay. Oh. But it was only like three bucks. Whoa. So, okay. I was like, you know what? And I listened to some tracks, and they're pretty darn killer. So, uh, yeah. Killer. Four bucks. Sorry. Take it back. I got two more to do, so go ahead and do what you need to do. You know, this one Goodwill, uh, I think the last place that uh, Jay talked about in the last episode where he got some great jazz uh, scores. I found some great jazz scores and uh, some funk stuff. And <laughs> love Eddie Harris, man. Um, so many Harris, Eddie Harris records we play here. We love Eddie Harris. I don't have this one, which has a gigantic uh, chocolate-covered cherry on the cover. And, and the name of the album is That Is Why You're Overweight. <laughs> and it's busted. Have you listened to it? It's funky. Um, what year? Let's see, seventy six on Atlantic. So I thought it to be a Is little more, a little more disco, uh, and it has elements, but it's not, it's not totally disco like you would think. Actually, it's some of the, uh, yeah, there you go, Jay. Keep it about that far back because it's kind of hard to see that. A big, <laughs> that's why you're overweight. It's so fun. I'm go get some chocolate covered cherries. Now. Some cordials. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, my dad was a big fan. Pork them. Oh. Do that number. Pop them with your mouth. Suck it out. You put the whole thing in there and then go <laughs> so it pops the top of it. It's like you're breaching a door as a SWAT team member. <laughs> and it cracks. The chocolate cracks. And then a criminal can run free at that point. If it, if he chooses to. Or you can turn states. You guys ever turn states? I turned steaks one time. I turned them over and they said, oh, those are done on both sides. And I'm like, I know, I came out and took care of it. Uh, um, <laughs> in that same Goodwill I was in, I uh, also found, uh, man, you know, we love the Blackbirds, which were students of uh, Donald Bird. Donald Bird. Uh, this is Action by the Blackbirds. It's the Blackbirds I don't have. What year? Like for a buck. 
It's a little later, 77 on Fantasy, but it's a Fantasy recording. Uh, they do good. They they do a good job. Look at here now. CCR. Look at there. Yeah, they they screwed CCR out of their ass. That's what they did. And this was, you know, not the best shape, but on that fantasy. This is what, doing it in the dark. That uh, same label. This one wasn't bad. Uh, no, there's there's the bad. It's got some chunks in it. Ooh, you know, not the best looking vinyl, but. It's a Blackbirds I don't have, and it's a dollar. And if it doesn't play right, then um, then you're out of dollar, right? I'll do a bunch of blow on it, and then sharpen the edge up and kill a hooker with it. I think somebody did that already. Probably so. Though. Um, I got two more, Steve. Okay, I got two more. Okay, you want a one off, one off? One off, one off. You want me to start? One of mine's a blue note. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All right, so um. I recently um, celebrated uh, a wedding anniversary, mm. like 20 year wedding anniversary. And my wife got me a gift card to uh, Earshot. Mm -hmm. So I went in there and did some shopping. Got a couple things. Butt shopping. Um, I was really interested in getting the, the new LCD Sound System album because I really love the one that I have, which is their first album. And so I had it in my hand. I was like, you know what? Let me just look and see if they have any other material because I listen to it. And it's it's good mm. you know, and, and it keeps leaving. Like people, they get it in and it's gone, and they get it in and it's gone. It's not staying. It's not staying on the shelf. Probably is now, but when it first came in, it wasn't staying on the shelf very long. At Underdog or at Earshot, and so, you know, I picked it up and I was like, well, I'm gonna get this and something else. And then I was like, so I went over to the, you know electronic area or whatever it was and I noticed he had there were some other LCD sound systems also and the new album is great but it's it's very polished compared to the early stuff which is yeah I could see that and so I found uh, I picked up this one which is the LCD sound system sound of silver this is actually their second album so this came out like two years after the first album okay the first album was 2005 I think this is 2007 huh. And it's great. It's it's more in the vein of what I'm used to, and so I was like, this is really more my, what I'm looking for. Uh, it's up your butt alley. It's up my butt alley. So we got some more LCD sound system to throw down. One off, one off. Okay. Um, I'll see your LCD and I'll, I'll I'll raise it a blue note. Think. Lonnie Smith. This is uh, some. It's a record. You guys <laughs> ever seen records? Uh, what really? When I saw this, not only the cover is great, and the track's great, and the label, I saw it was like Blue Note. Oh shit! It said with Lee Morgan and David Newman. So it's got Lee Morgan on the shit, who also has a documentary on Netflix about how his death happened. Um, so, hang on. Show that off, Jay. Did you say Lee Morgan? Yeah, Lee Morgan's on there. God bless the USA, that Lee Morgan? Yeah, that's the one, Jay. <laughs> this is the second album by American organist Lonnie Smith, recorded in 68, released on Blue Note. Uh, I found this at a Goodwill. Um, it's not in the best of shape. But, uh, you know, All Music gave it four and a half stars. Um, say, sophomore effort is easily one of the strongest dates that the Hammond B3 Master would produce for a label. So some strong Oregon marks going on here. Oregon marks. Oregon. I got an Oregon. Oregon. I thought you meant Oregon, personnel. like the state Oregon. No, 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 no. Personnel. We got what? Lonnie Smith. We got Lee Morgan, David Newman, Herman Henry. Morst. Some other motherfuckers. Cool. So, uh, I can't believe that was in there. Not in the best shape. We'll see about it. We'll see after the show about it. Okay. All right, do one, Steve. I got one more. Okay. Uh, I added to that C LCD sound system, uh, Black Sabbath Paranoid, um, The End is Near, Deluxe Edition, that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Many consider it the greatest heavy metal album of all time. 
Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know. It's debatable. Yeah. But it is, you know, it's an important record. It's an important record for war, sure. I'm to get this, pick it up. I don't have this record. So you can sing along. You didn't have that one? You can sing along. You can change the word to war pigs and sing your own version. I was just thinking. I was just thinking while well, some uh, of them have lyrics and stuff. He's talking about the, the bonus disc. Um, I was just uh, thinking. I, I may have even said to the reporter today. Like I said, I had Black Sabbath on shuffle because it was Friday the Thirteenth, and Electric Funeral comes on. I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure my first band, first band, played this, if not live, just for giggles mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. that's one of those riffs that like was seminal mm -hmm. remember playing electric funeral like early early the fuck on um that was one of those songs that was one of the first things you learned how to play uh this is one that jumped out at me on the prestige label funky gene ammons so the deal with this and careful of that jay that falls out on it they go everywhere Album by saxophonist Gene Ammons, recorded in 57, released on the Prestige label. All Music awarded the album four stars with its review by The Gene Ammons All-Star Jam Session, the recordings at the 50s, are all quite enjoyable. This one's no exception. Uh, Ammons seems to really uh, inspire his side men on these soulful bop jams. And I think that's the one that's actually... I, I did that one last because it's worth the most money. I think it's worth it's worth the money. Oh, what are you doing? Put you, these back. Are you pouring that back <laughs> into the, the thing? <laughs> well, kind of. I don't know what if we're gonna be drinking this. What is that? At this oh. stage in the show, I don't know if we're gonna be drinking that. Angel, angels, angels, just angels, just. Uh, you keep up with what angels do? No. no. Okay. They don't tell me. All right. There's no music playing. Do I put something on? I'll take care of it because we're going to take a quick break and come back with a soda speaking chip chat here on a lovely grown man record night. I, um, he just smiled and uh, dramatic pause handed me a Vegemite sandwich. Grown man record night will be back in a minute. Stick around. Grown Man Record Night will be back in a minute. Stick around. Grown Man Record Night will be back in a minute. Stick around. I do coke, uh, so I can work longer, so I can earn more, so I can do more coke, so I can work longer, so I can earn more, so I can do more coke, so I can work longer, so I can earn more, so I can do more coke. So Always chasing rain. This is crack, rock cocaine. It isn't glamorous or cool or kid stuff. It's the most addictive kind of cocaine and it can kill you. What's really bad is nobody knows how much it takes. So every time you use it, you risk dying. It isn't worth it. Look, everybody wants to be cool, but doing it with crack isn't just wrong could be dead wrong. Panasonic introduces our smallest, lightest VHS video recorder. When linked to this Panasonic video camera, this system responds as quickly as the action unfolds, focusing automatically, adjusting to changing light instantly. 
It even works in low light. And with a special Panasonic tape, it records eight hours of TV. Eight hours. Panasonic Omnivision. No other portable VHS system does more. It's amazing what Panasonic did to Regivision. Omnivision. All over the world, human beings cower before the onslaught of these unearthly enemies, whom no one has ever seen. Panic that sweeps around the globe as the great masses of mankind flee blindly in a headlong stampede of hysteria. Tell me what you know about Mitchum. Uh, Mitchum is a man, I think. Okay. And Olivia thinks it's a sumo wrestler, or like a wrestler. Tell me what you know about Mitchum. Uh, wrestler? A wrestler? Uh -huh. Deodorant? What does that mean to you? Uh, it's something that cleans up your stinky armpits. Mit oh. Mitchum. Mitchum. Oh. What does Mitchum mean to you? Mitchum means a man. Small man. With a mustache and a beard and a hat. I can already imagine him. Mitchum. Man. All day long. You like me too? No. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for staying with us to Grown Man Record Night, special edition, because it's special because it's Friday night, and I said it's special on my house on my camera. So, what are you going to do about it? You want to be special? You want to challenge me in my own house or in front of my own camera? Good luck with that. You tell them, why don't you let me know how that works out for you? you lose. You lose already. You move too fast. <laughs> lose. You guys ever seen Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny Dan DeVito? DeVito? And Arnold Schwarzenegger would, and the guy would be like, all right, everybody move and freeze. And he would say, you move too fast. He was like, what do you mean? What do you know? And then he was like, fuck everybody else. Remember that? No. You move too fast. No. It's very intimidating. Uh, let's do a, a soda speak. You know what I saw for the first time? Uh, soda? The Ring. I've never seen The Ring. You haven't? No. It was very good. Really? Yeah. It had a really cheesy, kind of crazy, horror show kind of ending. Did it have any titty balls in there? No. PG-13. Okay. And I appreciate a film that can scare you. Middle school too. And do it PG-13. No. Yeah, well, that's very true. That's very true. Yeah. Hey, you brought this soda over for us. What's this? We're deal? doing soda? Yeah, we're doing soda. What's that? Well, um... Royal. I was on the hunt for coconut cream. 
soda? And I ended up going to an Asian market. And, and I said, well, I'm in an Asian market. I got to check out the soda. We'll give us a bottle. Because they got some. They can have some weird ones. <laughs> so I found this thing. This is a some kind of an orange soda called Royal. And on the back it says Royal True Orange Soft Drink. Mm. Product of the Philippines. Filipino. Manufactured by Coca-Cola Bottlers. Now, Philippines. we did, uh, what else we did from the Philippines? There's like uh, the shrimp chips or the ketchup chips or something. That something weird. I wonder if they have that. I wonder if they have that. They point. have a sticker. It's funny. They have a sticker over the, right down here. It says 12 fluid ounces. They probably don't have that rule in, in the Philippines. We have to put like, the rule, like what am I drinking? My urine tube. So it's already. like a sticker right there. So let's try this. It's cane sugar. I wonder if I have that at the uh, Atlanta Museum of Coke. We can go in the room and drink all the Cokes from around the world. That's weird. Try that. Tell me what you think of that. Okay. I get a flavor, a taste I didn't really think I was going to get. It's a carbonated Gatorade. Hey, Jay, you want to try it? Fill it. Filipino. Phil, he's Carl in it. That's what I'm saying. It does have a weird kind of, um, not a soda taste to it. It's not very sweet. I kind of like it. Not a fill you up. No, it's very light and crisp. Kind of like blue blocker sunglasses. Which you can get now for a limited time offer if you if you visit CVS pharmacies and mention grown men record. Is that the one that you can see in high definition? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Everything's so clear and crisp, but whoa, whoa! My dad looks so like he has less dementia. This is carbonated water, cane sugar, concentrated orange juice, ten percent. Natural orange flavor, citric right. acid. So a lot of citrusy things. Yeah. And then some yellow and whatever. Sucrose, fatty acid Ooh, esters. Gross. Whatever that, that gross. is. That Stomach eaters. In there. Like, that seems gross. Intestinal fortitude. Hey, you know, I was on my way back from out of town earlier. My mom called me because I tried to chip at her house earlier. Interesting bottle. Uh, my mom was like, hey, look, you know the chips you, you had and you really liked? And I was like, yeah. And you said, if I ever found any? She's like, I went, I went over and I got you I, I got you some of those chips. And I was like, you kidding? Those chips? So I had to stop by my mom's house on the way because she got me these chips that we had talked about um, yesterday. I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, and you know how we love our dill chips here? Yeah. Not, so I love any vinegar-based chip like yeah. that. The thin, crispy, like Tom's dill pickle chips, good stuff. And we like the uh, uh, fried dill pickle from the Utz Corporation on the Ridge chip. These are America's Choice, so this says, catch them while you can. It's a limited edition. J. Higgs Who? Creamy Dill Pickle. Yeah, who's J. Higgs? Now, this is what I've come up with. This is what I've come up with. Now, these are ridge chips as well. As long as they're ridge chips. Say rib chips? Yeah. Um, this is a house brand of Save-A-Lot. I don't know if you guys have Save-A-Lots or not. It's a national chain of like discount grocery stores. Yeah, yeah Save-A-Lot. Yeah, not like a normal grocery store. The chips are named after the chain's uh, chief financial officer, Joe Higgs. Is that who's on the front of that bag? Yeah. This he, is he customary looks like, for uh, he looks like, uh, other store brands Mark Marin the or chain somebody. offers. Yeah. I thought it was like a chef, like a food channel chef. Like a Rachel Ray. But these are good. These are good. Not too <clears throat> not too dilly. They're great with a cold beer. Dexterity of the chip is pretty good, but I will say over the course of a couple of bags. It's a good dip chip, I think. Except. Sour cream. The amount of big chips in there to dip and to dip. They're all kind of broken. It's my beef. The dexterity of the chip 
dexterity and integrity. Maybe are, sat on the bag or something. Are very good. No. Often, that's what makes them the, the discount chip. Is the broken aspect of it. Oh. That right there was kind of a best case scenario. That's good. But good. And one yeah, of the better... Good ones. One of the better dip chips. I would say. We hold them up. Good one. Pretty good. Jay lying about it. Yeah. All right. Good chip. Good chip. Save a lot. That's that. That's because they're boring. broken. I think because they're broken. That's my beef. Uh, discount chip. The store brand save a lot chip. That's like a double. Yeah, store brand save a lot. Yeah. Double so you're like, oh, but all oh, they're they're all broken. So that should like, be like fifty nine cents. Yeah. They should be paying you not to turn in their workers. They're probably from Chernobyl or something. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, Jay uh, got a good buy on. I had a Chern I had a Chernobyl joke in there. I'm just gonna let it. I'm gonna let it lie. Everybody's got a Chernobyl joke. I Look, know. Hey, check it out. Uh, Show him off, yeah. Well, look how he's holding a bag. I'm telling you, it's Mark Marin. He's holding a bag of himself, holding a bag of himself, holding a bag of himself, holding Dude. a bag of himself. Oh. Mind blower. That's crazy. Don't don't get into the fabric of the universe, man. No vaping. No vaping. <laughs> That's gonna make me I pee. Hold, I <laughs> now I gotta pee real bad. <laughs> Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us for Grown Men Record Night. Unfortunately, we'll be back next week, but we'll be back real soon with another episode. We appreciate you. We hope you uh, tune into our uh, YouTube page, and from time to time, I'll post stuff on the fa Facebook page. Uh, more. Except uh, I've been real slack about it here recently. So, I don't know, man. I put something on your page recently. What was that? It was a picture of a gentleman. <laughs> You got lots of pictures of lots of gentlemen. No, it was no, a video. No, you do. There was lots of them. It was a video of something. Yep. What was it? It was all a bunch of shirtless dudes. No. Saying like, we're from Steve. So like, whatever. <laughs> whatever happens is whatever. Sweet berry wine. Sweet berry wine. You know what I mean? You got music playing right now? No, we got nothing. Why not? We should probably cue something up. I'm working on it. For uh, for all, for all, for all uh, intents and purposes. Look at that horror pattern. <laughs> all right, thanks for joining us for Grown Man Record Night. We'll see you next time with an all new show with new shit to say and new stuff to debate. And uh, it'll be a good time. We promise and we hope you join us then. Uh, for a, for a grown in the record night. Bye. Bye. Tell your mom to call me. <laughs> <laughs>